Chapter the Fourth. The Master of the Arts. Bang! Another whack to the door. Bubba frantically looked around, now awake. Where's the cannon? He said stupidly. Uncle Vern came skidding into the room but couldn't stop as he fell into one of the side walls knocking himself down. Harry was surprised the feeble wall didn't give way and send him into the ocean just outside. Uncle Vern got up, he was holding his shotgun in his hands. Who's there? He shouted. I'm forewarning you, I'm packing heat. There was an awkward silence moment. Then. Smash. The door was hit with such strength that the hinges popped clean off the wall and sent the door crashing to the floor. A monster of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was more or less completely concealed by a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard, but you could make out his eyes, glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Uh, um. Sorry about your door there. Don't know me own strength, he said with a mighty chuckle. He strode over to the sofa where Bubba sat frozen with fear. Bulked up a bit, didn't you? Well no matter, we'll take ye all the same Harry, said the stranger. Bubba squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching terrified, behind Uncle Vern. Wait. I'm Harry, Harry said. Oh, uh, Harry. Course it's you. And mighty glad to see ye ain't as big as tubs over there, said the giant. Harry looked up into the violent, untamed, obscure face and saw that his eyes were twinkling like a clear night sky. Last time I saw you, you was only a little baby, said the giant. Ye look a lot like your dad, but ye've got your mum's hands. Uncle Vern made a funny noise. I command that you go away at once, sir. He said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, shut up, Drubbles Nought, ye great tub of lard, said the giant. He reached out and jerked the gun out of Uncle Vern's hands, pointed it back at him and ordered the lot into the corner of the room. And I don't want no funny business, ye yeah, here. Or else. He then bent the gun into a funny little V shape like it was nothing. Uncle Vern made another funny noise, like a mouse being squashed. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back on the Drubbles noughts, a very happy birthday to ye. Got some at fur ye here, I might a sat on it at some point, but it'll still taste good all the same. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside were three large stinking, bloody slabs of what looked like meat and a little card that said Happy Birthday Harry. That's raw Dericol meat that is. Mighty hard to come by nowadays, but when I saw it in Dare Forest I just had to kill some for ye Harry, he said while swishing Harry's hair. Harry looked up at the giant. He didn't want to say thank you, as he wasn't exactly pleased with his present, but what he said instead was, who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rubus Hagrid, master of the custodial arts and head sanitation officer at Hogwarts. He swelled his chest and pounded it hard after he said this. Hagrid's eyes soon fell on the sad-looking fireplace with the shriveled chip bags in it and he snorted. He stooped downward over it, no one could see what he was doing but when he drew back a second later, there was an impressive roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with sparkling light and Harry felt the intense heat wash over him as though he just had his eyebrows singed off. The giant sat down on the sofa, which collapsed under his weight and began taking all sorts of things out of the pockets of his coat, a copper kettle, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquor that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Now then, let's make us some dairy call meat. Harry indifferently agreed. 
Soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling meat on the open flame. The stench of the raw meat was eventually replaced with a sweet, salty smell that reminded Harry of Aunt Petunia's fried onions. Nobody said a thing while the giant worked, but as he slid the first fat, juicy, slightly burnt slab from the poker, Bubba squirmed a little. Uncle Vern said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Bubba. The giant chuckled darkly. Yeah great put dinner of a son don't need fattening anymore, drubbles naught, don't worry. He passed the slab to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, even though on a normal day it wasn't anything to write home about. As he ate, he couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as it looked like nobody would care to explain anything, he said as he chewed, my apologies, but I still don't understand who you are or what on earth is going on. The giant took another big swig of the amber liquor and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. They labeled me Hagrid, he said, and I already told yeah, I'm master of the custodial arts at Hogwarts, yeah I'll know all about Hogwarts, oh course. I have no clue what that is. I don't own any pigs, if that's what you mean. I'm quite confused by all of this said Harry. Hagrid looked taken aback. What? barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Drubbles Noughts, who cowered back into the shadows. Drubbles Nought, by the time I'm done with ye, ye wish ye would even been born. Wouldn't even tell yub Hogwarts, for crying out loud. Did ye never wonder where your parents acquired all their knowledge? Knowledge about what? inquired Harry. About what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one jiffy. He had jumped to his feet. His annoyance he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Drubbles noughts were trembling against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Drubbles noughts, that this boy, the Chosen One, knows nothing ab about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school, after all, and his marks weren't all failing. He got a C plus in English once. I know some things, Harry said. I can read, I can write some. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, regarding our world, I mean, your world, my world, your parents' world. Earth? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Drubbles naught. He boomed. Uncle Vern, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like it's the devil's work. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mum and dad, he said. I mean, they're a bit of a celebrity. You're a celebrity. What? My, my mom and dad were famous? You have no idea. You have no idea. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair a few times then tied it in a bun, all the while fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. Ye don't even know what ye are? He said finally after getting his man bun in place. Uncle Vern unexpectedly discovered his voice. Halt! He commanded. Halt right there, good sir. As the boy's legal guardian I forbid you to tell the boy anything or I'll see you in court. A smarter man than Vern Rubble's naught would have backed down under the furious look Hagrid now gave him as he approached, when Hagrid spoke. His every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him? Question mark. Hagrid threw a punch at Uncle Vern's face and hit him square on the jaw. Never told him what was in the memo Dumbledore left for him? Another punch. I was there. Wham. I saw Dumbledore leave it. Wham. With his other arm. And you've kept it from him all these years. The giant said now shaking Uncle Vern with both arms. Kept what from me? said Harry excitedly. No. Stop. I forbid you. Mumbled Uncle Vern in his weakened state, now clearly in a daze. Hagrid gave him a stiff uppercut, sending Uncle Vern flying into the ceiling and then collapsing past out onto the floor. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, go boil your heads off, all of ye, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. 
a wizard, of oh course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the broken sofa, which groaned and sank even lower, and a thump in superior un, I'd say, once you've been taught up a bit. With a mum and dad like yours, you're bound to be the best there is. An ID mits of time you examine your letter. Harry expanded his hand at last to take the yellowish envelope, addressed in emerald green to His Excellency the Honourable Master Harry H. Potter, heavyweight champion of the world, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and like Tom Foolery. Headmaster, school bus Dumbledore. By order of Merlin, third class, grand sorcerer in chief. Supreme Mole Converter, Board Member of International Confectionery for Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter. We are just so tiddly-winked to notify you that you have been granted access to the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and like Tom Foolery. Please locate the enclosed catalogue of all required books and gear. Term begins on September 1st. We await your pig by no later than July 31st or you will be automatically expelled. Have a magical day. Hardcastle McCormick. Second in command headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head and actually began to make it hurt. He couldn't make up his mind which to ask first. After a moment he inquired, what does it mean, they awake my pig? Holy Hogwarts Harry, that reminds me. Said Hagrid, clapping a hand to his forehead with sufficient strength to knock over an automobile and from yet another pocket inside his overcoat he pulled out a pig, a real, live, squealing pig, a long feather quill, and a roll of parchment. With his tongue sticking out the side of his mouth, he scribbled a note that Harry had some trouble reading upside down. Dear Mr. Professor Dumbledore Sir. Presented Harry with his letter. Kidnapping him from the Drubble's noughts to purchase his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. Hagrid. P.S. Drubble's noughts a blockhead. Hagrid rolled up the note, shoved it up the pig's snout, went to the door, and threw the pig out into the storm. He then came back and sat down as though this was all perfectly normal. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. I'm sorry, but could you explain all that? Harry asked. Hum? Oh about the pig business? Hagrid replied as Harry nodded. Well you see, pigs is a mighty magical creature. Course most mulls don't see their true potential. All pigs got wings, yes yeah, see. Just can see em or feel em. Us magic folk though, we realized this hundreds of years ago, and have been training them to deliver our mail ever since. These normal pigs you see on pig farms and such, they still got their wings, but not trained, yes yeah, see. That's why they all just don't fly away. Pigs is inherently dumb, but got an excellent sense for direction. Harry nodded again, but with a confusing stare. Now then, where was I? said Hagrid, but at that moment, Uncle Vern, now blood-faced awoke from what should have put him in a deep coma. He's not going, he said out of breath. Hagrid grunted. Drubbles naught, shut your mull pie hole he said. Mull? said Harry, interested. Mulls, said Hagrid, it's what we call the lesser race. Or Urum. Non-magic folk like them. And it's your ghastly fortune you grew up with relatives who are the biggest mulls I ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in, gave him food, clothing, and shelter, we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vern, swore we'd crush it out of him. Wizard indeed. You were aware? said Harry. You were aware I may, a wizard? Aware? shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Aware? Of course we were aware. How could you not be with my twin sister being what she was? Oh, she got a little letter just like that and moved out to that school, she did the air quotes, and came home every holiday with her pockets full of mischievous concoctions turning my dolls into rats and what not. It was the devil's work. I saw her for what she was, a freak. And so did our parents. They were so ashamed of having a witch in the family. 
she stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It was as though she had wanted to say this for years, as if she memorized and practiced this in the mirror each and every night. After Lily was kicked out of our house, she met that little monster Potter kid at school and they ran off, got hitched and had you, not in that order. And of course I knew you'd be similar, just as strange, just as abnormal, and then, God knows she deserved it, she went and got herself blown up and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. So much new information it made his head hurt. He said, blown up? You told me they were killed by elephants in a circus accident. Circus accident? roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Drubble's noughts scuttled back to their corner. How could elephants end up killing Lillian James Potter? It's an outrage. A scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in our world sings his name. But why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly overexcited, like a giddy schoolgirl. I never expected this, he said, in a low, eager voice. I had no idea, when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of ye, how much ye didn't know. Ah, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell ye, but someone's got a, and I can't believe that someone's me. E e e. Ye can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing, oh course. He said with a huge grin while twiddling his fingers. The giant then stopped, cleared his throat, looked up and threw the Drubble's noughts a dirty look. Well, it's best ye know as much as I can tell ye, mind, I can't tell ye everything, a lot of it's a great mystery, ain't it? He sat down told Harry to gather around the fire and didn't make a sound for at least five minutes, and then said to Harry's startlement, it begins, I suppose, with, with a person called, well it's incredible ye don't know his name, everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Holy heart failure Harry, people are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went. Bad. As evil as you could go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name was. Hagrid gulped but no words came out, though Sweat sure did. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, can't spell it. All right Voldemort. Hagrid closed his eyes and covered his ears. Don make me say it again, please Don. Anyway, this, wizard, about twenty years ago now, started looking for his own clique to hang with. Got him, too, some were terrified, some just wanted a bit of his authority, cause he was getting himself power, all right. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust, didn't dare get friendly with anyone after a night on the town. Terrible things happened he was talking over. Course, some stood up to him, and he killed them like they were ants. Horrible, painful death. One know the only safe places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore's the only one you know perfectly well who I'm talking about was afraid of. Didn't dare try talking the school. Now, your mum and dad were an okay witch and wizard. Never made boy a girl in chief at Hogwarts or anything like that. Suppose the mystery is why you know perfectly well who I'm talking about never tried to get M on his side before. One assumes they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side since they were good buddies and all. Maybe he thought he could influence M. Maybe he just wanted M out of the way. All anyone knows is, he turned up in the township where Yaus was all living, on Halloween ten years ago. He came to Yerhausen. Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty, spotted handkerchief and gave a thunderous sneeze. Sorry, he said. Anua. You know perfectly well who I'm talking about killed M. And then, and this is the real mystery of the thing, he tried to kill you, too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose, or maybe he just had a thing for killing babies. 
but he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead. That was not your run of the mill cut. That's what ye get when a powerful, evil curse touches ye, took care of your mum and dad in your house, even, but it didn't work on you, and that's why ye are legendary, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to kill em, no one except you, and he'd killed off some o' the best witches and wizards of the age, the Nutters, the Dorkoffs, the Ripples, and you was only a baby, and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Hagrid's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of green light, more clearly than he had ever remembered it before, and he remembered something else for the first time in his life, next Thursday would be his Aunt Petunia's birthday. He'd have to make her a card. Hagrid was watching him. Took ye from the ruined house myself, on Dumbledore's orders. Brought ye to this lot. Load of trash, all of it said Uncle Vern. Harry was startled, he had practically forgotten that the Drubble's noughts were still there. Uncle Vern certainly seemed to have got back his courage. He was giving Hagrid the evil eye. Now, you listen here. Boy, he snarled, I accept there's something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating couldn't cure, and as for all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos, no denying it and the world's better off without them, they were asking for it, getting mixed up with these wizarding types, just what I expected, always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at that moment, Hagrid leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat. He lunged towards Uncle Vernon and speared the pointy end right into his great gut. Uncle Vern coughed. As Hagrid pulled his makeshift sword back out, blood started to ooze all around the opening. Uncle Vern clutched the wound as he flattened himself against the floor and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa, which by this time sagged so low he was practically sitting on the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask, hundreds of them. Hagrid, the letter from Hogwarts, it referred to me as as the heavyweight champion of the world. Why is that? Well now, Hagrid chuckled, you defeated you know perfectly well who I am talking about, who was just about the most powerful wizard on the planet by most people's calculation, and so the title belongs to you now, don it. But what happened to volume, sorry, I mean, you know perfectly well who I am talking about? Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished nowhere to be found. Same night he tried to kill you. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see. He was getting more and more powerful, where'd he go? Some say he kicked the bucket. A lower garbage, in my opinion. Dunno if he had enough human left in him to die. Some say he's still out the Biden his time. People who was on his side came back to her hours. Some of them came out a kind of trances. Though, I reckon that's just what they were saying as to not get in any trouble with the law. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere but lost his mojo. Too weak to carry on. Cause something about you ruined him, Harry. There was something going on that night he hadn't tallied up, I dunno what it was, no one does, but something about you bewildered him, all right. Hagrid looked at Harry with affection and blazing eyes, but Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrifying mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spent his life being Bubba's pouching bag, and Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vern's slave child, if he was really a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toads every time they'd tried to lock him in his shed? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Bubba had always been able to kick him around like a football, Hagrid? He said quietly, I think you must have made a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To his surprise, Hagrid laughed. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you was nervous or mad. It's one no up perks. Harry looked into the fire. Now that he came to think about it, 
Every odd thing that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him had happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Bubba's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut, he'd managed to make it grow back. And the very last time Bubba had hit him, hadn't he got his revenge, without even realizing he was doing it? Hadn't he set a Bengal tiger on him? Harry, after a long gaze into the fire, quickly looked up at Hagrid, now smiling his biggest smile he had ever remembered. See? said Hagrid. Harry Potter, not a wizard, you wait, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. A king. But Uncle Vern wasn't going to give in without another fight. He mustered all his remaining strength to stand up, though still clutching onto the wound Hagrid inflicted on him. Haven't I told you? He's not going. He said weakly and out of breath. He's going to he got high and he'll be mighty glad for it too. I've read those letters and he needs all sorts of rubbish, spell books and wands and... If he wants to go, a big dumb idiot like you can't stop him, growled Hagrid. Stop Lillian James Potter's son going to Hogwarts. It's blasphemy. His name's been down ever since he was born. Probably the most entitled kid in history. He's off to the finest school of witchcraft and tomfoolery in the world. Seven years there and he won't know himself. Messes with the mind, it does. Further better, oh course. He'll be with youngsters of his own sort for a change, and he'll be under the most tolerable headmaster Hogwarts ever had school bus stumbled. I am not paying for some crackpot LD fool to teach him magic tricks. Yelled Uncle Vern. But he had finally gone too far. Hagrid seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. That's it. Never, he thundered, insult, school bus, Dumbledore, in, front, of, me. He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at all three drubbles noughts, there was a flash of violet light, a sound like a firecracker, a sharp pop, and the next thing you knew neither Bubba, Aunt Petunia, or Uncle Vern had any mouths. They were all just gone. Sealed shut. Uncle Vern roared, or at least he tried to roar. But as much as the family tried to scream, all that could be heard was a very muffled, inaudible whine. Hagrid then began to chase Aunt Petunia and Bubba into the other room. Uncle Vern looked terrified at the sight of this. Once they were through the door, Hagrid came back out and started coming for him. Uncle Vern neither had the strength nor the will to go against the giant any longer. He made a break to join his family on his own. And Hagrid and slammed the door behind him. Hagrid walked back towards Harry and stroked his beard. That ought to shut him up, he said with a giggle. Harry gave a sideways look at Hagrid. Be obliged if you didn't chit chat about that to anyone at Hogwarts, he said. I'm, er. Uh, not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do a bit to follow ye and get your letters to ye and stuff, it's the only reason I was so keen to take the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? Are you some kind of criminal? asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts myself but I, er, uh, got expelled, to tell ye the truth. In me third year. They snapped me wand in half and everything at a ceremony in front of the whole school. But Dumbledore let me stay on a custodian apprentice. Fantastic man, the Dumbledore is. Why were you expelled? It's getting late and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Hagrid quickly. Got to get up to town, get all your books and that. Now then off to bed with ye, chop chop. He took off his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can sleep under that, he said. Don't mind if it wriggles a bit, I think I still got a couple of dormice in one o' dear pockets. We can have em for breakfast. 